Hey guys, thanks for coming to Mentoring 101. I am hoping you guys are as passionate about mentorship as I am. But I guess I should go ahead and kick off by introducing myself. My name is El Marquez and I'm the community architect for Operation Safe Escape. We're a 501c3 looking to help uh, victims of domestic violence be able to take back their digital lives. We actually have a community channel in Slack, so if you're looking to maybe use your tech skills to make a big difference in someone's life, go ahead and jump in and we can talk to you about what you can do. Unfortunately, that doesn't pay the bills. Um, full time, I guess I'm a community advocate. That means I get to travel the world and help people find their passion, help people figure out how to begin their journeys. And as a part of that, I've become a technology evangelist. I teach on everything, AWS, containers, security. I mean, give me three weeks and I'll teach a brand new course on whatever subject you want. And I say that not to brag, but I say that because when people ask me who I am, they say, hi, I'm Elo Punk. I'm a professional noob. That might be a weird title, but it really encompasses what I like to view myself as. I always say I'm not a subject matter expert, and that's not to say something about myself that's negative. It's because I don't want to be. I never want to be an expert because that means that I myself view myself as having learned everything that I need to. And if you've been in tech more than 10 minutes, you know that it's constantly changing. So I love to break things. I love to break things and fix them and find new ways to break them. I push it to the point where the developers, and this has happened, look at me and say, L, that shouldn't be possible. And when that happens, that's when the real fun starts. But what I've learned is I don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are people out there who've done this probably longer than I've been alive. So I ask for help. And I know that's hard for some people admitting what they don't know. So that's what I'm here to do today. I'm not here to talk to you about how to be the perfect mentee or how to mentor someone. I can't give you those skills because those are skills that you already have. What I can do though, is take what I've learned and teach you how to better wield those so that you can really have not a career, but an adventure. Well, how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna tell you my story. And I do this not so you guys can say, oh, I'm so sorry that you went through that, or wow, you've accomplished so much. I'm doing it so that you can take my story and use it as a template for your own. Make it a choose your own adventure. Use it as bullet points for what you want to do next. Use it as a way to view why it is that I view the world the way I do. Because one of the hardest parts you're gonna have at being a mentor or a mentee is breaking out of your own head and understanding that everyone doesn't speak your English. Everyone doesn't understand the way that you teach or what your question is. But what before we get to that, let's get started with the story. And every good story has an origin. Mine begins a long, long time ago in Mexico, but that kind of makes me feel old. So a while ago in Mexico, I hear a lot that I had a disadvantaged background, and I hate that. No, I didn't have TV or electricity or running water, but I had goats and horses and land and over a hundred cousins to hang out and play with. That's why it was so difficult when I came to the US, because I was put in special programs for migrants and I was treated like I was less than because I didn't speak English. So that was what we focused on, not learning how to use computers. But I got through it and I graduated and I did great and I had great dreams of working with the archdiocese. So I studied Christian theology and I went back off the grid because I wanted to be able to help people who grew up in the same background as I did. But every story, every story has to have that negative moment when you try to figure out if your main character is gonna make it through it. And mine happened in 2013 when I found myself divorced basically almost homeless, and I had no career, no background, I'd never held a job, and now I had three kids that I had to figure out how to support. So I made the leap. I found out about a program called Linux for Ladies, and this program was supposed to take women who had absolutely no technical background, and in the span of six weeks, six weeks teach them how to be Linux administrators. Guys, that was Linux, Apache, and MySQL in six weeks. It felt like it was impossible. But the way that the group got through it is we got through it as sisters. We relied on each other. And just in case you're wondering, 
that's me. Um, we didn't focus on our weaknesses. We focused on our strengths. When the teacher left, we'd stay after class and say, I have no idea what he said. I'm like, what the hell is a table and a column and a database? That's how new we were. And someone would stand up and say, oh, that's easy. And they would draw it out. And someone else would say, I still don't get it. And somebody would come up and explain it a different way. I mean, when it came to SSL, I rocked that thing and I taught all of them. All right, maybe some other people helped, but still, I was really good at it. And we accomplished great things. Most of us left the Linux, uh, the Linux for Ladies program, Red Hat certified system administrators in six weeks. We were proud. But every good story, well, every good story has a villain. And unfortunately, my friends, you guys are the villains, the community, because it didn't take long for me to hear that despite what I'd managed to accomplish in six weeks, I was nothing more than a publicity stunt. I was able to get a job interview at Rackspace, who Forbes Fortune 500 that year had called one of the hardest companies to even land an interview with. And I got the job, but people only saw that publicity stunt. They only saw that I was a woman or a minority, and that must have been why I accomplished what I did. But my kids, they'd gotten used to eating. So what can you do? You keep going. And that's when I realized that, you know what? No matter what they said, I had to be able to accomplish my dreams and my goals. So I did tickets and I worked and I tried my hardest to be able to give back to my team. So imagine the feeling that I had when six months into my career, one of the techs on a different shift reviewed my tickets and his feedback which went to myself and to my manager was simply four words. I can tell you that those words, what, four, almost five years later, still hurt because I was really trying. And I decided, you know what? They're right. I'm an imposter. I don't deserve this. I'm the publicity stunt. I need to step away and let someone who can do this take this job. So I went in the next day ready to resign. The only thing that kept me from doing it right away was trying to figure out how to do it and still keep my dignity. So I'm sitting there looking at the computer and if you know me, you know that I don't stay quiet for long unless something's seriously wrong. So one of my teammates, they kind of roll over and they're looking at my screen and they're like, hey Al, would you break? And guys, if you've been checking your email, I should stop saying guys, I'm sorry, y'all. If you're checking your email right now or doing your nails or talking to your kids, just focus for a moment because this, this is the most important part of this talk. And that's because I had a moment there. I was given a moment in which I had to choose. Do I just shrug this off and say, oh, I'm fine. Do I do what most of us say? And, oh, I'm just thinking, don't worry about it. Or do I show vulnerability? And I decided, I don't have anything left to lose. So I looked at him and I told him what was happening. What I realize now is what I did was I took that moment and I passed it on to him. And there are people who will do this for you and you need to do what he did. Don't shrug it off. Don't say, oh, that guy sucks. Don't worry about it. You're doing fine. Oh, you'll get better. No, he took that moment and he ran with it. And he said, you know what? Let me take those tickets. I'm going to review them. I'll get back to you. I promise it'll be more than four words. And thus enters our hero. That's Aaron. And yes, I have permission to use that photo of him. So later he comes back to me and says, okay, let's take a real look at this. Here's where you started. And you're like, oh, customer, something's wrong with your server. What should I do? And then from there you went, customer, your stuff's still broken. Pick one of these. And in the last few months, you've gone, customer, your stuff was broken, I fixed it, close the ticket. Yes, you are doing the same work over and over again, but you're growing your confidence. So the next step is to take something harder. And I want you to hear that and say that there was never a formal agreement for mentorship. He never said, all right, Elle, I'm your mentor. This is what we're gonna do. I have your career planned out for you. And I never looked at Aaron and said, okay, I wanna grow, will you mentor me? It was just one person who saw a need and one person who asked for it. 
And what I saw is what we ended up doing was we changed the culture of our team. Because I'd look at Aaron and I'd say, man, I don't understand why the server is paging so much. And it, it has enough memory. And then he would start explaining and Kevin behind him would say, wait, Aaron, have you thought about X? And then Corey behind me would say, you guys are making this way too deep. All right, I'll look at this whiteboard and he would draw it out for me. It no longer was asking stupid questions. It was 100% growing our team. Once again, no formal mentorship, no cohort program, just people helping each other grow. But to me, this is the key foundation of what mentorship is. Because a mentor is simply someone who helps you fill your knowledge gaps, to seek opportunities to help you grow and excel. That's all they wanted to do. And a mentor is someone who can let your guard down, who share your insecurities, that moment of vulnerability, and to ask all those stupid questions that we all have sometimes. And if you're one of the people that always says, there's no such thing as a stupid question, quit it. Because when you're the person asking the question, trust me, there is such a thing as a stupid question. And if you keep saying that there isn't, it makes me feel like I'm the only one that doesn't know enough to be able to ask. I once heard the saying that people come into your life for a reason, a season, and a lifetime. This right here is what I want to be the way that you guys view mentorship. Because I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. And what I'm asking from you today is for you to be that reason. What my talking with Corey and talking with Aaron did is it planted all these different seeds that began to grow, seeds that completely engulfed the concept of imposter syndrome. So I couldn't even think about it because I was having too much fun. And one of those seeds really began to flourish. See, Aaron's a great guy and he is a great teacher and I spoke to him last week, we're still connected. But Corey, Corey could speak my English. He taught the way that I learned. I asked him a question about the OSI model and he says, don't worry about that. Let's talk about a post office and the way that letters go. In the end he goes, all right, let's take that story and break it apart into each part of the OSI model. I will always remember that. When I learned about paging, he's sitting there handing me books, talking about swapping. Feeling that book and remembering that memory will help me be able to grow. And so we entered a season. I became very comfortable with asking him questions. So when I was ready to move on and grow from a Linux one admin, I was like, all right, I got this. I'm gonna become a level two. Corey, here are all the things that I need to do to be able to pass the test. This one I know, this one I know. I don't even know what that says. Can you help me figure out an action plan to do my learning? Once again, I never said, hey, Corey, will you be my mentor? Will you figure out everything that I need to do? He never looked at me and said, we got this. This is what you need to do. I just asked questions. I didn't ask him to teach me specific things. I asked him to help me set the groundwork for what I needed to do. So you've been listening to this for a while. And some of you may be going, all right, Elle, that was a great story, right? Good for you. You did the thing. But what I'm here to learn today is to figure out how do I get a mentor? I'm not you, I don't have that vulnerability. If you've been listening to this, you know what the answer is. And if you've tuned out, I can tell you that you're not gonna like the answer. Because what you need to do is you need to quit looking for a mentor. It's fruitless. You're not gonna hand your career over to somebody else and have them build a successful one for you because they're not you. They don't view the world the way you do. They don't have the same experiences they do do. And even though they might understand the concept, like I wanna be an SRE or I wanna be a Linux admin, they don't understand why you wanted to do it. Therefore, they can't craft what you need to do. What you need is teachers. You need to find those people that when you ask them a question, they light up and they just start talking to you and they start teaching you and they have no ulterior motive other than being excited about the subject. But make sure you find someone who teaches the way that you learn. I have some friends that if you hand them white pages, man, give them a couple hours and they will be able to break things down for you. I can't do that. You give me white pages, I'll be ready in a year. You give me videos, maybe six months. You sit someone down in front of me so I can ask questions and so we can learn together, I'll be ready in six weeks. With that though, 
you need to look for your moment and you need to take it. You need to find the courage just to ask a simple question and not to feel that it has to be this big blown out thing where you have to come back to that. Just ask, just say, hey, I don't understand why this MySQL server is completely sharding itself. And yes, that's actually a thing. And then go back to that person and say, hey, I really loved the way that you explained that. Can I ask you one more question? Don't worry about a formal mentorship. But with that, when you ask questions, be willing to ask more. Nothing is more heartbreaking to me than when somebody asks me to help them. And I'm excited. If you can't tell, I love mentorship and I love learning. So I'm just going on and on and they're nodding along. And by the end, I realize I lost them and they haven't the slightest clue what I was talking about. But they walk away. I've had this happen and I'm like, wait, wait, stop. I understood every third word of that alphabet soup that you just spoke. So let's break it down. Forget explain it to me like I'm five, explain it to me like I'm two. And I've had people call me out and then say, okay, you're just you know, making yourself seem worse. You're making yourself look bad. I don't care. I wanna learn. I don't care what I look like in that moment because the way I'm gonna prove myself is by being able to go out and do what I learned. And in that, when you're asking for help, know what you're asking. I will I teach on containers. And so I'll have people come up to me and say, oh, that was great. I want to work in containers. Can you help me? I don't know. Can I? What do you want? Do you want to learn about networking? Do you want me to review your resume? Do you... That isn't a question for me. That is taking all of the emphasis and putting it on me. Being like, all right, I don't know what I'm doing. You figure it out. I have kids. I have a new relationship. I want to learn myself. I don't have the time to take on your, bur your burden. But within that, be open to failing. I found the best mentor when I was looking to get into OpenStack. This guy spoke in a way that, I mean, cool. Things would, my lights would just turn on and what should have taken me six months to learn in six hours, I had it down. So I said, okay, would you help me in this season? Because I want to grow in this area. And he looked at me and said, no, I can't. And I think he saw how I was a little heartbroken. He goes, my wife is due to give, a, uh, to have, Lord, my wife is due to have our baby pretty soon. She would kill me if I took this on. Mm -hmm. Some people might view that as a failure. I just asked, hey, do you know anyone else that can help me? But how do you know what your question is? I have a talk that says, you know, uh, containers, how to know what you know that you don't know how to know. Like that is such a complicated statement, but when you don't know how to start, that's how it start. Uh, that's how it feels. So what you need is you need an action plan. And there are several different ways that people go out and they talk about this. They're great. Being able to uh, bullet journal, it's a great thing. Um, I see a lot of really cool decorations in bullet journals that kind of keep you from focusing on your plan. And I hear people talk about OKRs. Hey, I've done OKRs, but I do OKRs after I've already set up what it is that I want to do. So the way that I want to teach you is SMART goals. <laughs> I don't know if people might be like leaving the chat right now and just watching another talk. People have a really big hatred for SMART goals. And I think that's because when they're taught, they're taught so stringent. It's like, okay, let's draw this out and you're gonna fill out each individual part. And then somebody goes and grades it, like, okay, that's not specific enough and that's not measurable. How do they know? They don't know you, right? What these things mean to you is completely individualized. This is one of those tools that I can't teach you how to use. I can teach you how to yield, wield it, but this has to be all you. Recently, I have taken on a new mentee and I thought I was liberal. This girl is a freaking wild child. Like trying to get her to focus is almost impossible. She's a fairy, she's all over the room. But what I learned is the moment I start speaking the way she learns, whether she's running around the room, she's listening. So when I decided to teach her SMART goals, this didn't mean anything to her. She doesn't care of something specific, but she does care if it's significant to her. She doesn't wanna measure things, like who has time for that? 
but it's meaningful, she'll work at it. It's attainable, okay, and I could walk you down the rest of these, but you need to find the words that speak to you. Why is it that you're looking to change jobs? Why is it that you're looking to get into security? Your why is yours. And that's the first step to looking for a teacher is to know what you want them to teach you. So I wanna show you the way that I was able to accomplish this and finally leave being an admin because I didn't like it. <laughs> All right, I worked at OpenStack. OpenStack is the cloud company, or I worked at OpenStack, I worked at Rackspace. And Rackspace is the cloud company. That's what they advertise themselves for. So. I should learn the cloud if I want to progress, right? That, my friends, is a dream. Like, I want to learn the cloud. Cool. I want to learn a marathon. I want to do a lot of things. But how many of them do you actually accomplish? So I needed to make this a little bit more specific. Because who in the world even knows what the cloud is? It's a lot of jokes on that. You should Google it. But anyways, I worked at the OpenStack company. So I said, OK, I'm going to learn OpenStack. That's pretty specific. I know exactly what I'm gonna tackle, right? Is that measurable? I mean, like, how do you know when you know OpenStack? I got a job, I know this. If you've ever been new to a job, which I'm guessing some of you are, you don't know anything the moment you get that job. So maybe that's not measurable. I found out though, that as a part of the OpenStack technology, Rackspace had written a certification program around it. All right. I'm going to become an OpenStack certified administrator. Either I am or I'm not. That's simple. That's measurable. Is it attainable? That one was hard because I wanted it and I wanted it to be attainable, but I had three kids at home. I was still having to do my day job. I had three mentees who were in their season who I was trying to help become Linux admins. I had a study group that I was running at the same time. I should have turned my phone off. Um, at the same time, I didn't have the time. I, it wasn't attainable at that moment. So I took a break from my SMART goals. You don't have to rush through them. It's like, okay, let's take a moment. I had somebody else take over my study group. I helped each one of my mentees be able to find a new mentor. I sat my kids down and said, all right, look, mom wants to do new things. Do you know how you go up to the next grade and new grade and you learn to read more and you learn new math? That's what I want to do. So I'm going to sit at this table with you guys while you're studying and I'm going to study too. And I'm going to take a test just the way you guys do. When they understood that, it made this dream completely attainable to me. All right, so next, is it realistic? Well, yeah, yes. This is when you start kind of doubting yourself. Like, oh, I could, but I don't know if I'm good enough. Screw it. Rackspace had a training team. So got really proud and I walked up there and I said, I wanna become an OpenStack certified administrator. Will you guys help me? And Byron looked up and said, who are you? <laughs> and okay, so maybe I, I went, the wrong way about that. But you know what? I didn't know. And I, I didn't know about SMART goals quite yet. I didn't know how to develop them. So I sat down with them and we started talking. And I don't know if Matt is actually in this talk right now because he runs the K8s group, but he really took me under his wing. He gave me VMs to practice on. He broke down the test for me. It was a wonderful way for me to get started. And once again, I didn't ask for a mentor. I just asked for questions when I had them. I asked for answers when I had questions. And so I said, okay, Matt, you told me that each one of these parts of the test is broken down into domains. That's attainable. It's that whole concept of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? How do you pass the test? By figuring out each section that you need to study, not focusing on the big picture just yet. This was realistic to me. I could tackle this. The next one, guys, there I go again. The next one, y'all, don't be like me. I am insane, and anyone who knows me that's listening to this right now will back it up. I decided that I was going to do this in 60 days. That was the time that I gave myself, two months from what's OpenStack to I got this, I'm certified. It was hard. 
I asked so many questions. I would go up to the admins and say, okay, what are these logs saying? I don't even know what I broke. And I remember one of them asking me, what customer is this for? I was like, myself? That's when they got interested. They were excited that somebody wanted to know what they did. So now I had a training team and I had a group of admins willing to answer anything. So yeah, I got certified in 60 days. And one of the coolest parts is about that time, Matt decided to move on and look for new things. The training team said, we know the way you think. We know the way that you break things down. How would you like to work with us? A side where uh, that's just an amazing part of looking for teachers and not mentors is they become some of your biggest advocates. This plan though, doesn't always work. And as I told you guys, sometimes you have to embrace failure. When I started working at Linux Academy, they said, L, write a program on, write a program, write a course on containers. I had no clue what containers were. So I'm trying to tackle this and I'm trying to, you know, still go for my, I guess my passions and still take care of my family. What I hit was burnout. I was done. So I decided I'm going to do something that I'm passionate about. So I sat down with a piece of paper and I thought to myself, L, what do you want? This is actually the piece of paper that I drew it on. And I love you guys. I love security. I love the community. I want to learn about security. That's a great dream. So we need to break it down. And I asked a few people, I asked Cinders and Ash, I asked Sciatic Nerd, I said, how do I get started? And they said, you're great. You help out a lot. You don't know what we're talking about. Why don't you start with your security plus? It'll give you a foundation to just understand the alphabetic soup. All right. That's measurable. Once again, either I am or I'm not. It's attainable. I have all of you guys. I literally have a community of people willing to help me. Is it realistic? I had just started a new job. I had everything that I told you guys about. I was fighting burnout. Maybe not. So I went to my boss and I said, this is important to me. I want to do this and I'm willing to, you know what, take a back seat, whatever. Like, I will do what you need me to, but I'm not putting anything extra in. Now, I know that's almost impossible for most people, but I had an amazing relationship with my manager and he said, okay, you know what? Find a way to make your passion and what you wanna do something that we can benefit for. So I started running study groups. Like I need to learn, other people need to learn. Let's put these on the web and do it together. From there, I started podcasting. You know, willing to admit my failures meant that other people wanted to teach. So I brought on industry professionals and I asked questions and it was a wonderful experience for me and really helped me fight burnout. And so I said, okay, I'm going to pass that exam. And did I tell you guys that I'm crazy? Because I decided that I had 30 days to do it in. Bad move. And just to hold myself accountable, I put it on Twitter. Hey guys, I'm taking my security plus and I'm passing it in 30 days. All right, some of you kind of helped me be crazy because there was so many people that said, we believe in you, how can we help? I was excited, right? Burnout is gone, I'm gonna do this. And then I got my workload for my new job. I said, all right, Elle, you're already doing B-Sides Austin. Hey, can you do InfoSec Southwest and help? Okay, these are security things, we're still good. I can do this. By the way, uh, InnoTech reached out and they asked if you can do a talk there. Still security. I got this. We also need you to do Linux Fest Northwest. We're going to need you to fly there, do your thing, fly back. And when you get back, we need you to go to Barcelona so you can do DockerCon. Did I mention I really didn't know containers and I was really burned out? Now I had to teach a workshop in it. All right. Somehow manageable. Maybe 30 days. A little bit of a panic attack. Oh yeah, since you're done with that, can you attend KubeCon too? I was done. There was no way that I could accomplish this. But I told you guys that I'm crazy, right? So I said, screw it. I'll push it back a little bit. April 1st to April 20th. What's the difference between 20 days and 30 days? I'll get this before I even have to start everything out. Maybe not. This was my tweet saying, hey, I, I couldn't do it. Maybe I'll prolong you know, my experience. I ended up giving up. That burnout will bite you every single time. But this is where I want to be different, and I want you guys to be it. 
even when you're working with mentors, even when you've set that goal and you just know you're going to accomplish it, failure is part of the ride. So the way that I live my life, whether it be personal and technical, it's a great quote from Samuel Beckett that really spoke to me. He said, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, but fail better. What have I told you guys? I love to break things to the point where the developers start questioning their own code because you won't believe what you can accomplish by attempting the impossible with the courage to repeatedly fail better. No, I did not get my sec plus in the time I'd allotted to myself. But when the end of the year, I'd gotten my GSEC, and thanks to some mentors that I had along the way, I went back and I don't know, with like three days worth of studying because I'd been doing that work all along, I passed my SAC plus. It took me way longer than I thought, but finding those mentors to cheer me on, finding those people to be advocates, finding those teachers that were willing to take a moment really helped me accomplish my dream. And as you can tell, it was about one day before my third, uh, voucher actually expired. So those of you that are going, you know what, Elle, I have accomplished so much. I'm exactly where I want to be. But what I want to know is how can I help others? How can I be that mentor that they need me to be? Remember, you're not there to do their job for them. Help them develop smart goals. Talk to them about what it is that they want to do. But in the end, your job is simple. Be open, be honest, be vulnerable. Be open for those moments. Look for them. There are times that I don't need I don't know that I need a mentor or a teacher. I'm just mad at myself. I can't understand why I can't learn something that's so simple for everyone. I remember throwing the biggest hissy fit, being in tears because I couldn't understand a freaking kernel parameter that everyone on my team did. And I was like, flip the table, pissed off. And Corey looks at me, he goes, okay, let's step back for a moment. What you're saying is that you really didn't understand the whole concept of SWAT that you didn't understand how this was configured. When you're ready, come to me and I'll help you learn that. He gave me my space. He let me feel what it is that I needed to feel, but he helped me have an out so that I could go and tackle it all over again. With that, be honest. I don't know how many times my career has been set back because I go and I ask somebody and they're too ashamed to admit that they don't know so they tell me this big convoluted story with lots of acronyms that make them sound so good. So then I spend months trying to dissect that because obviously they know they wouldn't have set me on the wrong path. And the more that I learn, the more that I realize they're full of hot air. They put my career back pretending to be teachers. It's a horrible feeling, but also be vulnerable. When we take on a mentee, when we start teaching somebody, we want them to know that we're gonna set them straight. We know what we're talking about. You can have confidence in me. No one wants the perfect teacher. No one wants the perfect teammate. They want somebody who's human, somebody who has failed, that can teach you from their failure. Someone who has modesty, who can take the time and acknowledge that things are hard. That vulnerability is what makes you an amazing teacher. I said that I'm telling you a story and every story has to have an ending, right? I don't know mine yet. I've been in tech five, maybe six years. I have so many goals that I want to accomplish because to me, it's not a career. It's an adventure. It's a story. That's what I want you to start viewing it as. Enjoy what you're doing. And if you don't find it, use the teachers along the way to be able to pursue your dreams because the last part is a lifetime, right? And the best gift that any of my teachers had given me is the adventure that I had along the way. Now I'll introduce you to one last person. This is Corey. Corey was there the very first day I had my first interview. And I remember him asking me a question about session persistence and me being like, I have no idea. So I gave that big convoluted answer and he's like, just stop, just stop. You don't know what it is, admit it, Tell me how you would troubleshoot it and move on. And at the end, I said, all right, will you tell me what session persistence is and why you asked me? He said, you know what? Go look it up. Figure it out. Here's my email. Get back to me. I did that. And hey, I got the actual interview besides the phone interview. I got the job. I walk into my team the first day and there's Corey. 
remember when I talked about Corey who sat behind me, who started drawing out, who learned to teach me the way that I learned? Same guy. So now I'm, I'm ready for my new adventure. I wanna learn new things. And I decided, hey, programming is probably something that I need to understand. So what, three days ago, I called Corey up and I said, hey, Corey, this is what I want to learn. Can you help me kind of develop an action plan? Like I've got my smart goal, but I don't know the first step. I said, you know what? Go and build something, whatever. Spend an hour, figure out a script. I'll give you a Zoom call. We'll start dissecting it together. There's no promise of a mentorship. There's just somebody reviewing my code, despite the fact that he's been my teacher for six years. Now, I can't promise that this is going to work for you. I can't. There's no way for me to say, if you try this, you're not going to fail. And honestly, I hope that along the way you do fail because that's going to be your best way to be able to move on. Let me show you, though, what it's accomplished for me. You know, I started out with Linux for Ladies and I got my RHCA and I got a job at works at Rackspace. Then I had the horrible moment with that ticket review. And I decided I wanted to prove myself. So I got my RHCE. Then I realized I failed at being a Linux admin. I'm not saying bad things about me. I just hated the job. So I got that OpenStack training job and I got my COA. And it was one of the coolest experiences because they said, hey, why don't you go to Sydney, my first international trip, and talk about what you were able to accomplish and how. And that's really what started my job at speaking at conferences. And while I was there, I admitted my faults. I admitted what I broke. So I asked tons of questions. And when it was time for Reboot, the mentorship program, they called me up and they said, hell, L, why don't you take this? And I said, all right, but I need mentors along the way. One of those mentors was Spots. I asked her every OpenStack question you could ever get to. So when there was a position open at Linux Academy, who do you think she contacted? And I had a great time. That's when I became a technical evangelist and I started traveling more. And the company saw that people were responding to my message about asking questions. And they said, don't worry about doing training. Anthony's actual job description for me was change the community one student's life at a time. I asked about the study groups. We started podcasting. All of these had failures along the way. They weren't perfect. It's all about breaking it down and keep trying. I can't tell you what the rest of the future brings for me. I don't know. And you know what? I'm sitting here working on an arch box that's right here that I can't get to boot anymore. But I'm actually excited about it. I've never tried arch. So here's hoping that it works. All right, guys, thank you so much for learning this. I promise I will eventually learn how to stop saying guys in a talk. But if you have any more questions, feel free to contact me. I live on Twitter. And if you happen to follow me, you'll see that I've been asking for job, you know, resume interviews for people. I've been asking for advice for people. And that's because people are showing me their vulnerability. And though I can't help them, I know somebody in the community is going to. So thanks for helping me. And uh, I'm going to try to make this window small so I can look to see if there are any questions. Hey, Elle, thank you so much. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that and inspired me. And let me see, we had one person asking, can you share, are you able to share Corey's OSI model analogy? I will write it up because it's kind of long and I'll put it on my uh, webpage. I'll actually help, I'll actually ask him to help me write it out because you know, my remembering of it is probably different than his. So I'll have it up by the end of the week, um, lopunk.com. Sounds good. And also, if you have any questions you want to ask Elle, she'll be in the Discord for this track. And again, thank you so much for your talk. And I wanna thank everyone else for participating in B-Side San Antonio 2020. We are split across Go to webinar for the main tracks, go to meeting and Discord are being used for our workshops, events, and resume review. And we want to thank all of our sponsors, Open Security, Digital Defense Incorporated, CyberSec Jobs, and Clear Jobs. Take a moment to go to the Discord and thank them. And also look in the community area. There's a lot of things that are going on. Thank you for our sponsors, our price sponsors, no scratch press and fishbarrel.com and again don't forget to look at the activities and the events going on today we have about an hour left our next 
presentation will be Broken Arrow, and that will be Will Baggett in about 20 minutes. And again, thank you, Al, and thank you all of you for being here today.